Lord, I just thank him for being our God. This morning, I just wanted to exhort you on this thought. No reason to fear. No reason to fear. I, I realize we're going into another year, and with the headlines every morning, you wake up with earthquakes in divers places, wars and rumors of wars. You hear of all kinds of things on the news, but I want to tell you one thing. God has not left his throne, Amen. and none of this has taken God by surprise. Amen. How many of you know that God never sleeps or slumbers, and he don't need you to stay awake with him? Ain't God a good God? Amen. We know that fear is the primary tool of the devil. We conquer fear by studying, speaking, and acting on the word of God. Did you hear me? We have to speak it. We have to say it. We have to study it. And the word of God is what pulls us over today. I looked at that word fear, and we had placed it on our slide. And if we were to look at it, F-E-A-R, it looks like that F could stand for false. E for evidence, A for appearing, and R for real. What is fear? False evidence appearing real. Say that to your neighbor. False evidence appearing real. In Proverbs 29, 25, NIV, Proverbs 29, 25, NIV, it said the fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Whoever, whoever trusts in God, you're kept safe, praise God. you kept safe because he said that he was a shelter for us. There in 1 John 4-4 four, four, NIV, 1 John 4-4 four, four, NIV, he said, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. We had in one version said, Great is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And we don't have to fear today. What does fear do? Fear will immobilize you. What does immobilize mean? Prevent you from moving or operating normal. Fear. Keep you from doing what God wants you to do. Cause, uh, praise God, you to reach lower than the goals had God had prepared for you. God had something higher for you. And what fear will do will keep you in place. Fear will cause you not to reach the full potential God has placed in you. I say it will cause you to not reach your potential. The full, how many of you want to reach your full potential? Fear not appears frequently in the Bible. And even when it's not Fear not, he said, do not be afraid. Someone had counted and said it was about 365 times. Fear not. You know, back when, most of the time when I see they, they're saying that, it's when angels appear. How many of you want to raise your hand and know if an angel appeared to you tonight, you'd be kind of scared? <laughs> I would. Now, whoa, <laughs> did I eat something? <laughs> no. But the first thing they said was, fear not. Fear not. Fear can come in many ways, and that's why we have nightlight. And I'm not going to come against you if you still got a nightlight. And then we got double locks on the doors. I bet everybody got a double lock and an alarm. Some people have double locks, alarms, and, and, and rods up on the window. We live in that society. But Psalm 23, 4 says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. How many of you thank God for that today? There 
are things that for fears, I think, I put four in 20,004 that you need to conquer. That's fear. These four you need to really zero in on. And these are, the first one is the fear of failure. Isaiah 41, 10 NIV says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear of failure. You might have failed in the past. You might not have done everything that, that you want to do. Praise God. But you know what? God is a God of recompense. Do not be dismayed. He said, I will uphold you. We have that fear of failure. And then we have a fear of the future. Why do we have to not fear the future? Because we don't fight the battle alone. The battle is not yours by yourself. God is not leaving you alone, so you don't have to act like you by yourself this morning. But fear of the future. Psalm 37, 23 says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. How many of you know we like to sing that song, Order My Steps in Your Word? Well, God wants you to know that he's able to see what lies ahead of you. You don't have to be afraid to step on the steps like you. When you go out, and even I don't care how long you've lived in your house, you're afraid to step on the steps in the dark. But when it comes to life, when you're stepping, you got to take the next step, not even being able to see where you're going. Fear of failure. Fear of the future. Fear of the past. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, NIV said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creature has come, the old is gone, the new is here. How many of you glad the new year is here? Well, we got to believe that the new life in, in Christ is new to us. We said the, the Lord's blessings, that he's new every morning. Fear of the past because of where you come from, because of what you've done. The devil wants to deceive and say God is unable to make everything good today. I don't care what didn't go right last year or the year before last. I don't care what didn't go right yesterday. God said he's the God of today, and you don't have to fear your past when you've asked God to forgive you. Abel, I like this in Deuteronomy 33. The message says, here's what will happen. While you're out among the nations where God has dispersed you and the blessings and cursings come in just the way I've set them before you and you and your children take them seriously and come back to God, your God. Look at that key word. Come back to God and obey him with your whole heart and soul according to everything that I command you today. God, your God, will restore everything you lost. Look at your neighbor and say, everything I lost. He'll have compassion on you. He'll come back and pick up the pieces from all the places where you were scattered. No matter how far away you end up, God, your God, will give you, get you out of there and bring you back to the land your ancestors once possessed. It will, it will be yours again. He will give you a good life and make you more numerous than your ancestors. Oh, I like that scripture this morning, and I like it, I like it. Why? All of us have pieces of us that have been broken and put in places in the past. God said, I'm going to get those pieces, and I'm going to bring it together. How many of you want God to pick up the pieces of your life? I like that where the potter saw a vessel, and, 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 and where the man thought he couldn't put it together. But God can put your life together again. He can put your heart together. I don't care if your heart's been broken. He can put your finances together. He can put your relationships, anything that needs mending, look at your neighbor and say anything that needs mending, praise God. God restores life. How many of you want life restored today? I like that what Ella Fitzgerald said. She said, it isn't where you come from. It's where you're going that counts. How many know it's where you're going this morning that counts? We don't have to have fear of comparison. Galatians 6, 4, 
through five in the NRV said, don't compare yourself with others. Just look at your own work to see if you have done anything to be proud of. You must accept the responsibilities that are yours. Get off social media wondering if you're as good as that one or the other one. You know, you can look on there and they got those pictures fixed pretty. They got a way now of making them look very, very pretty. And you know what's wrong with our young society? They look at that, and not only the young, but even the old, you look at that and you feel like that's normal. They don't know what's normal anymore. But I tell you what, God doesn't want us to start this year comparing our life to others. We'll just know that God loves us. Looking at people and thinking they're better off, they better looking, they got more. Well, they may have something, but you can't judge their life by looking at it. Comparison. It's the thief of joy. <laughs> you know what? That's not a scripture. That's something Theodore Roosevelt said. Because if you compare yourself, you'll never be happy. How many of you want to go in God today? Being able to know that he's our God. Well, what does God expect of us, Pastor Ella? Well, this morning, God's highest desire for you and I is to make, is not just to make us rich or successful or popular or, or he doesn't have to make us famous. God's desire for us is to make us right with him. How many of you want to be right with God? Oh, if you're right with God, you don't fear today. You don't fear what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, I, I thank God that you know if he's your source, he's going to supply every need according to his riches in glory. You have to stop and know who you are. I am rich. I am whole. I am healed. I am righteous. I am, praise God, wise. All these things. God reminded me one morning in prayer. He said everything. He said, I want all these things for you. Not only what for me, but for you today. Everything God wants for us is good. If you get in your Bible, you'll say, you say, hey, that's mine. I'm everything God said I am. I am what he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. Praise God. Go ahead and stand this morning. I don't have to fear. I don't have to wonder. I don't, have, I don't care who gets in the office. I don't care who's the king. I don't care who's the queen. I don't care who's the president. God is still going to be my God. How many of you believe that today? I'm not going to worry in advance, praise God. If God has taken care of me this long, he's going to take care of me the rest of the way. What did God say? From earth to glory, praise God. You got a right to praise him today. Go ahead and lift your hands and don't fear. Love God. Praise God and just meditate with us as the, as the praise and worship team comes because he is worthy. Praise God.